Hi there! Every now and then, my wife asks me to build a gadget that she can use in school for her demos, or for the students' labs. This time, she asked me for a device able to figure out if a liquid solution has a low or high resistivity, basically if it is an ionic or covalent solution. Here is what I put together for her in just a weekend. Enjoy! Here is the circuit I came up with. It is a simple circuit that turns on an LED if a simple probe is put in contact with an ionic solution with relatively low resistance. Since it needs to be portable, it is powered with a simple 9V battery. The circuit uses an op-amp configured as a voltage follower. The output is connected to a green LED which lights up if the output goes low. The non-inverting input is connected to the plus 9V through a resistor, which I calibrated empirically. Because the non-inverting input is connected to the plus 9V, the output will also be high, and the LED will therefore be off. However, I can also connect the non-inverting input and the ground of the circuit to the solution through a couple of wires. If the resistance of the solution is low enough, the voltage of the non-inverting input will lean toward the ground, making the op-amp output to switch to low, which in turn will turn on the LED. Simple enough, don't you think? My wife's students will use this device to check the conductivity of a solution, to determine if the material they put in some distilled water is an ionic or covalent compound. The LED will turn on only with ionic compounds that will decrease the resistivity of the distilled water. For this simple device, I designed in OpenSCAD a small box to contain it. It has a small hole on one end to let through a couple of wires that make up the sensor. The cap instead has two holes, one for the LED and one for a switch to turn on and off the device. And here is the 3D printed box with its cap. I had to make five of these boxes to accommodate my wife's needs. Here instead is the prototype mounted on breadboard, and as you can see there are very few components on it. This integrated circuit in the center is the op-amp NE5534, and this is the green LED in series with its uh, 330 ohm resistor. These two wires braided together are the actual sensor. On the opposite side there is the connector for the battery. This one is the resistor that keeps the op-amp non-inverting input to plus 9 volt. Right now there is one with a 2K value, but we will need to adjust the resistance empirically to make sure it works as expected. In other words, this resistor is the one that establishes the sensitivity of the whole device. We will use some plain water to make sure the LED does not turn on, and we will add some table salt to see if the LED can then turn on. You can see that with the 2K resistor the LED turns on even with plain water, so we need to decrease the sensitivity. Let me pause for a moment to do so. Ok, I have just replaced the 2K resistor with one of 1.8K. Let's now repeat the experiment to see if the LED turns on with plain water. And yes, the LED still turns on, which means the sensitivity is still too high. Let me lower the resistor some more. Removing the 1.8K and installing one of 1.5K. Testing one more time. And this time the LED does not turn on, which means the sensitivity should be low enough now. However, now we have to check that the sensitivity is not too low. To do that, let me add some salt into the water. Yeah, and now the LED turns on, perfect. The conductivity sensor seems to work fine, since it has detected the presence of an ionic compound in the water, the table salt. It is now time to assemble the final circuit in its own case. I am going to mount the circuit on a half soldierable breadboard. I have chosen to cut it in half for two reasons. First, the circuit is very small and I don't need a big board to solder it on. 
and being that small it will be easier to hold it in one hand while using it. Second, using a soldierable breadboard rather than a perfboard simplifies the wiring because most of it is already on the board and I only need to add a few jumpers on it to complete the connections the way I need. These boards are very easy to find in online stores. I usually buy mines on Amazon, but also other stores that sell electronic components have them available. Of course, you are free to use any kind of board you like, be it a simple perf board, or a soldier board breadboard, or a strip board, or even make your own PCB. I decided not to go with the PCB route because of the simplicity of this circuit. With so few components, making a PCB and put the components on it would have not saved me time, nor there was much risk of making mistakes. Once the circuit on the board was completed, I put it inside the case I made for it and completed the assembly with the LED and the power switch mounted on the cover. I also decided to use some tape to hold the cover on the case, considering that these little devices will be managed by students and I don't want them to easily open it and break it. As an alternative, I could have used a couple of small screws to hold everything together, but this was something I had to do over a single weekend, and so I decided to go through the fastest possible route for the design of the case. By the way, I have prepared a web page with all the details for making this device, in case any of you would like to reproduce it. The link is in the video description. The final test of the completed device merely consisted in verifying that the LED did not turn on with the device, but only after submerging the probe into the salty solution I had previously prepared when experimenting with the sensitivity of the device. The test was, after all, just to make sure that the circuit was still functioning properly after closing the case. My wife used the device in school right on the next day after I made it. She told me the sensor worked perfectly, and her chemistry students enjoyed using it while experimenting with different compounds to verify their nature. All in all, I am satisfied. I was able to design and build five of these devices in just a weekend, and they were all up to the expectations. Expectations on my wife, of course. Does that mean that she will come back soon with new requests? Well, time will tell. In the next video, however, we will be back with our own stuff, I promise. And so, I'll see you soon on this screen, and as usual, happy experiments!